about hybrid dynamic system and feedback control. So thank you very much for the introduction and uh, thanks for, for having me here. So I understand that this is two weeks in a row now that you're listening to somebody from UCSB and from my department in particular, the ECE department. And um, I understand that there are a lot of different backgrounds in the audience since uh, you're required to attend this. So um, I'll try to convey some of the things that go on in the research that I do. Now the research that I do is on the more theoretical side. Um, which does make it hard to, um, to create a seminar like this, but I'll, I'll try to, to make it not too technical and try to convey the main ideas. So again, I've been working for the last, I would say, six years in a field called hybrid dynamical systems and hybrid control. Um, before that, I worked in the area of nonlinear control systems, and I got into the hybrid systems but basically because I wanted a, a broader toolbox in which to uh, be able to draw from in creating control algorithms for dynamical systems. And um, in wanting to understand hybrid control better, I realized that there was still a lot left to be understood about hybrid dynamical systems themselves. And so in addition to looking at control results, we were also looking at developing analysis tools for this class of systems. So let me start off by mentioning that Historically, control has focused on systems and algorithms with continuous dynamics. So I think it's fair to say that control made the big name for itself um, in, the, in the space development age and in the, the hypersonic vehicle stage and, and airplane stage where um, you know, a lot of work was put into developing autopilots for highly maneuverable aircraft. Um, or other things related to, to space vehicles. And again, these vehicles are, in essence, continuous. Their positions, velocities change continuously. And uh, you know, usually you're trying to control around some trim condition for an aircraft. Um, and so the dynamics aren't too extreme. Um, things like control for vibration isolation tables, maybe for some of you in an area not in control, maybe you use tables like this from Newport Corporation to isolate your experiments from vibrations of the floor. I did some consulting work with uh, Newport Corporation on uh, control algorithms for their vibration isolation tables. And again, there everything's really changing continuously, classical control. Um, the segue, you can think of that as a glorified inverted pendulum, glorified inverted pendulum experiment, maybe did an inverted the pendulum experiment as an undergraduate. Um, again, basically things are changing continuously and you use continuous control algorithms, robotic arms, chemical processes. And kind of the key thing that links all of these systems together is that their dynamics are all modeled by differential equations. So you just need to know something about the physics in each realm to come up with the differential equation that describes how the state changes over time, whether it's the position or the velocity or the temperature or the chemical concentration or the angles or whatever those are, there's some physical rules that tell you how they change that are producing for you a differential equation that describes the dynamics. And then feedback just involves, okay, saying that these dynamics not only depend on what the current state is, but also some controls that we apply, maybe deflections of surfaces or positions of actuators or um, other things that show up in these systems, variables that we can control and how do those things affect the dynamics as well and how do we build a feedback algorithm? So how do we make this U variable here a function of the state or maybe of some reduced number of measurements to get the system to behave like we want it to? So that's the classical control story. Um, but one thing that happens to be true is that in many current applications, you will find systems where you've got continuous interacting with discrete or interacting with discontinuous. So this kind of thing happens in a lot of different settings. One would be the setting of mechanical systems with impacts. So like a ball bouncing on the floor, or bouncing on a table, or this Newton's cradle toy experiment 
or maybe even a robot that you're trying to get to run. In all of these situations, you've got mechanical systems making impact with a surface. And in that situation, a very good approximation of what's going on is that at an impact, the velocity undergoes an instantaneous change. So for example, a ball dropping to the floor would be dropping towards the floor with negative velocity. And then as soon as you impact the floor, there's an instantaneous change in the velocity. So it's not changing continuously anymore according to a differential equation. It's changing instantaneously from negative to positive and then moves away from the floor. Now you could argue that, well, you could model all of that continuously at a very different time scale, but a good approximation of what's going on is to say that variable changed instantaneously at an impact. And so then you can imagine that modeling this would be important for, for example, getting a robot to run. And uh, there's, there are people like Jesse Grizzle at the University of Michigan who's spending a lot of time looking at developing control algorithms based on solid, a solid theoretical foundation that would enable a robot to, to run. Um, other situations where you've got continuous interacting with digital, um, one very simple setting where you don't really need very much in the way of sophisticated hybrid dynamical systems knowledge would be simply um, when trying to control a continuous time process with a digital computer where you sample the state and then you act on it by updating your controller every sampling period. So a sample and hold type of operation to implement a control. Again, there you've got the interaction of continuous, which would be the system you're trying to control, and things that are discrete or change instantaneously, like an instantaneous change in your measurement when you sample it, or an instantaneous change in the control that you use um, when you maybe use a zero in your hold on the output of your com computer device. Um, something that's very commonly studied also these days is controlling multiple plants over some type of computer network, communication network, where um, you try to control things remotely and you consider as a part of the process maybe the communication delays and communication quant quantization and other aspects of the communication that interact with the continuous aspects of the plant and again, depending on how fine of an analysis you're trying to, to do, that may involve wanting to be careful about the interaction between the continuous and the discrete. In fact, there are also some very interesting models of impulsive biological behavior. People have looked at a variety of models to explain why um, a big group of fireflies might be able to synchronize their flash, um, which is a phenomenon that occurs in nature. And one model of this is to think of each firefly as having an internal clock state. And each time a firefly sees another one flash, it makes an instantaneous change or a jump in its clock state to get closer to the point where it would also flash. So again, it's, these are not the only models that have been used, but one model that's postulated is that there's kind of an impulsive effect that another firefly's flash has on the internal <coughs> clock state of a given firefly. And so, again, if you want to understand these models, uh, or if you want to understand what's going on in these systems and maybe how to control them, then it becomes important to understand, to understand hybrid dynamical systems in the same way that you would understand differential equations. So many of you use differential equations in your research, some of you don't, but for those of you that do, you know, having a, a good understanding of, of how solutions to differential equations behave is important to what you do, and then you could imagine that the same story would be true if you're looking at systems that have hybrid aspects. Now, not just do we run into the situation where the dynamical system that we're looking at has hybrid aspects, where there's this interaction between continuous and instantaneous change, or continuous and discrete variables, but in control, you actually sometimes run into problems where you're trying to control a system that's classical, continuous change of variables, but the objectives that you're trying to achieve ne necessitate a hybrid control algorithm. There's some control problems that you cannot solve with classical feedback that you can solve with hybrid feedback, and they usually 
are associated with some type of topological constraint that makes solving the problem impossible with classical feedback. So here are some examples that really all have a common theme. If you're trying to, let's say, globally asymptotically stabilize the straight up position on an inverted pendulum, so you don't care where you start, but you want to end up straight up, and you want to have the property that if you start close to straight up, you stay close to straight up. Since this angle variable on the pendulum lives on a circle, somewhere there's going to be a dividing line between deciding to go up from down um, kind of clockwise or counterclockwise. And because of that topological constraint of living on a circle, as I'll explain in a minute, there are, there are obstructions to doing this with classical control in a way that would be robust to the types of things you'd like to be robust to like measurement noise in the control system. Um, orienting a satellite is, is very similar. Um, there, instead of um, having a, a planar orientation, you've got a 3D orientation that you want to control. Um, but to be able to do this with feedback in a way that's guaranteed to be robust to measurement noise and to be able to do it globally is something that actually requires hybrid feedback. A very similar situation might be a continuous system like a car trying to go around an obstacle. And again, if you come upon the obstacle right in front of you, you basically have to make a decision about whether to go around that thing to the left or to the right, and somewhere there'll be some boundary of your decision where you decided to go one way or another. But that's creating this topological constraint of separating out two different behaviors, which differential equations are not very good at doing. Um, but hydrodynamical systems are. So let me try to explain this with a, um, a picture. Suppose you were trying to position yourself over here on a circle. And um, you wanted to have the property that if you started close to that point, you stayed close to that point. And you wanted to have the property that you came over to this circle, used the point on the circle using feedback. Um, and you wanted to be robust to measurement noise, meaning that if your sensors were kind of getting confused about where exactly you were and could only give you an interval of information about where you were, that you still headed over in this direction. So the, the most naive thing to do would be to just have a feedback that was discontinuous over here on this boundary on the opposite side of the circle and just say, well look, if I'm in the upper hemisphere, I'm going to go around in this clockwise direction. If I'm on the lower hemisphere, I'm going to come around in the, the counterclockwise direction. Okay, that's reasonable, except there's one problem, which is that over here on this boundary, if there's sensor noise that's unable to be definitive about which hemisphere you're in, then what's going to happen over here on that far edge is that the measurement noise could keep you from ever actually making any progress. So it could toggle back and forth where you say, oh, go clockwise, no, go counterclockwise, no, go clockwise, go counterclockwise, and in principle you could get stuck. Now, you might say to yourself, well, okay, but when is that type of noise signal ever going to happen? Well, imagine this as being some type of um, game or adversary versus um, prosecutor type role where your job is to orient yourself to position at an adversary and then maybe do something, you know, at least tag him with a, with a laser or something. That adversary may have the ability behind you to move back and forth to prevent you from making a decision about how to spin around. And so this could actually come up in a real life problem. And it turns out that the way you can solve this problem is with hybrid feedback, where you actually use some type of hysteresis variable that keeps track of which direction you've decided to go around. So you could say, well, there's this region where whether I'm going around clockwise or counterclockwise will just be a function of a variable that I store. That, I will, that will make jumps sometimes. So like if, I, if I'm thinking I should go this way and I find myself over here, now I'm so far this way that I should really change my 